Back in 2007, I was extremely lucky to be able to spend one month with Tony Maserati when he came to London, and I learned so much from that experience. The lead vocal is without a doubt the king of any pop mix. So one of the keys to mixing is making sure that the vocal sits right in the mix. And a lot of people do this by using compression alone, but I personally like to do it manually. So I do a lot of manual vocal writing. And it takes a lot of time, but it's definitely worth it. And also, somewhere in this video, there's a little free giveaway hidden away. So make sure you watch until the end. Vocal automation is one of those things that are difficult to teach. And that is why I didn't mention it much in my books. A lot of it is down to performance, a bit like playing an instrument. So no two people would ever do it the same. However, I realized that there are a few powerful pointers that might help you to get better results. Number one, when I automate my vocals, I find that it's really helpful to change perspectives a lot. And I make the, the vocals sit with the drums really well, the snare and the kick and the vocal together. And then I might mute the drums and automate my, my vocal together with the guitars and keys and all those kind of things. And then I shift back to the whole mix, the vocal in the whole mix. And while I'm doing this, I might do little tweaks in the music as well to make sure that the bed around the vocal is also opening up for the vocal. And also, later on in the mix, if you feel like the vocal is fighting with things, try this, try muting different instruments randomly. And then you might suddenly hear that, whoa, when I took this away, the vocal feels a lot clearer suddenly. Then you know that that thing is the problem. Point number two, the level you're mixing at is super important. If you're cranking a mix up, generally everything will sound good. You can get away with any mix because we feel like a loud mix is great, right? And it's really obvious when the vocal is too quiet on low level because you can't hear it anymore. So in general, I really recommend making it harder for yourself when you mix so that it sounds good and even in the worst conditions. So I'm giving away a free 30 minute coaching session with me. It's a Zoom call where you can ask me anything you want about mixing or music or whatever is important to you. And to book yours, just write free session in the comment field below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Back in 2007, I was extremely lucky to be able to spend one month with Tony Maserati when he came to London. He was mixing an album for Craig David and I was asked to assist him and I learned so much from that experience. And one of the things that really surprised me was how he was using an old 80s ghetto blaster a lot and how he placed it behind himself in a very awkward position. And he was explaining how this is a really good approach to vocal automation because uh, most people listen to music like that in a car or an office space or, you know, with a Bluetooth speaker somewhere in the corner. And very rarely people listen to music like sitting in front of speakers in a, in a studio environment. Of course, I check my vocals on other things too, like headphones or big speakers. But to me, the priority is to make my vocals sound good on small speakers. Another aspect of making sure the vocal sits right in the mix has to do with the rest of the instruments around it and making sure there's space for the vocal to sit in. And one of the best ways to create space in a mix has to do with multiband compression. So what I do is that I put a multiband compression on an instrument that is fighting for space. And then I send the vocal into the side chain of that multiband compressor. And I set it up in a way so that the top end or the mid range ducks a little bit every time the vocal appears. So in that way, the instrument that is fighting for space will become less bright only when the vocal appears 